Welcome to Australia in Space TV. My name is Chris Cubbage. I'm the editor with the Australia in Space magazine and My Security Media. Today we're joined by Darren Lovett, Executive Director with the iLaunch Trailblazer from Adelaide. Darren, thanks for joining us. Thanks very much, Chris. Really happy to be here and talk about our program. Absolutely. And it's great to have you on. We were just uh, talking off camera uh, whether we've covered Trailblazer in enough detail. Um, but yeah, maybe an introduction to the program. And uh, there's a number of announcements that we'll have a chat about today in, in some of the projects. But yeah, very interested to know uh, where you're at. And it's about $180 million funding, I think you've got to spend. That's right. That's the that's a magic number, uh, Chris. And and thanks uh, thanks for the opportunity to talk about this. Look, I'm really excited to talk about this program because it is one of the largest programs in the country delivering on space uh, commercialization and projects. Um, as background, you know the Trailblazer Universities program. It provides dedicated investment to accelerate Australia's innovation agenda at speed and at scale. Um, and it's built on the back of uh, some quite extensive analysis that shows that you know Australia is in the top um, top ten percent of the world in terms of producing IP per capita or um, technology. Um, Eighty five percent of our research is rated at above world class, and yet uh, we underperform in in achieving commercialization outcomes. So the trailblazers were put together by the uh, the federal government. Um, awarding each trailblazer $50 million of grant funding to uh, incentivize and, and, and build linkages between commercial entities and researchers. Um, our trailblazer, the iLaunch trailblazer, is a space-focused one. Um, we're focused on building Australia's uh, enduring space capability through three areas. We've got commercialization of core projects, which we'll talk about today. We've got a fast-track accelerator, which we'll be unveiling mid-year. And we also have programs to build the workforce of the future. Um, I like to think of us as uh, you know, commercializing cool ideas into space hardware. Um, we're very fast. We've only got a three and a half year timeline. Um, we're already one year in. So time the clock is ticking, one and a half years actually. Um, we're very hard in terms of the tech level. So we're trying to get TRL four to eight, and that means space qualified, ideally up into space on a space station or into a, a satellite. Um, we're leveraged, so we've got that 50 million from the federal funding, but we also have a consortium. So the universities also provide 50 million of match funding, and our industry partners provide another um, 80 million. So that's 180 million overall. Um, we've got very generous re relationships with our partners to share our intellectual property and get it out of the lab and into the uh, real world. Uh, World-class researchers from three universities. Our consortium is built up of UniSQ, University of Southern Queensland, which is leading the partnership, um, and also the Australian National University in Canberra and University of South Australia in Adelaide. Um, we've got very focused on delivering results. We've got a, a strong industry uh, experience team. And, and finally, I think the biggest thing is, you know, inspirational, you know, space, it's very easy to sell space, but we're shamelessly using space to, you know, to, to build the workforce of the future and to and to build partners. Well, it sounds like uh, they've obviously got a good executive director there. You've got very good antecedents uh, within the industry as well as your background. So you bring that sort of the guidance and the strategy uh, to it. Maybe uh, how, how are you designing the program uh, and with only 18, 18 months to so, or so to go, what are some of the, the deliverables that you've got or what's really uh, sort of out in front right now? Uh, yeah, it's, that's pretty um, pretty observant, Chris, because uh, I guess a year ago or just over a year ago when we started this program, uh, you know, there'd been a, a fairly extensive delay between the government's uh, initiative and I guess awarding the contracts. So partners move on, times change, yeah. money money changes. Um, so our first job in the program was to really build and engage with industry to showcase what research is available in the, in the consortium and then really to build that partnership between potential project outcomes. So, you know, the, the mantra is we want to commercialise those cool ideas, we want to get them exported and we want to um, make sure that they have a, a, a long-term future. Um, so as of today, we have uh, over 30 partners uh, signed up. Um, we've got over 20 core projects which are under contract, so that's contractually signed up um, with partners and money. Um, 130 million committed in funding. We've purchased over 10 million uh, in terms of capital equipment, things like uh, additive manufacturing machines, 
such as those used by CSIRO, which will be uh, doing some world-class stuff with um, novel dual metals, um, bringing in things like titanium and copper and weaving them together in, in complex shapes. And we've created over 60 positions within university and, and, um, and industry where we have researchers and PhDs and postdocs um, working with those partners. So I think we've got a lot of uh, good runs on the board right now. And some of the projects um, are really fascinating and exciting. Well, one I looked at, uh, Innovor Technologies and ANU uh, have partnered with you guys, uh, and then you're working on that software-defined radio. So I suppose what's the scope of the, some of these projects? Uh, so everything from sort of SDR through to actual, uh, now we're talking about AI to monitor health of astronauts, uh, patients and remote workers. So, you know, the, the breadth of the project seems to be uh, very broad. Yeah, there, the, you're quite right that it is very broad, um, but there is always a, a space theme to it. Um, we tend to focus more on upstream, so we haven't uh, de de developed a lot of downstream, you know, data-related projects, data-heavy projects. Um, so the, the focus was on commercialization. Um, we've got things ranging from, you know, additive manufacturing of, of, um, of housings, um, of, uh, you know, composite windings, um, radioisotope heating units, which will hopefully displace the nasty plutonium units used by the US um, in a more safe format developed here in Australia um, to provide heat and power. Um, right through, as you said, to, um, you know, things like uh, Plants for Space, one project that we plan to work with the UK Space Agency and get um, actual plants onto the International Space Station. Um, as well as the, uh, the the project we're going to talk about today with um, with Aspen Medical to put micro wearables on the International Space Station and track and monitor health of astronauts, but as an analogue to how we improve um, health delivery benefits here on Earth. Well, that's one of the, one thing we definitely look for is there, how, much, how much of this, uh, well, these projects, I suppose, have that ba application back, uh, back to Earth, uh, because obviously there's always that, that gap, but this one in particular, AI to monitor health of astronauts, if you can monitor health remotely, then that has a lot, a lot of applications. Uh, the other one, just in the back of your mind, we'll come back to it, of mm. how many of these projects may well have not been commercialised had it not been for this funding and for the Trailblazer uh, sort of uh, program. Uh, but, yeah, maybe just come back to yeah. this one in terms of that touching yeah. back to earth and th those applications. Yeah, look, that, that's an important focus for us. Um, look, I, I love everything about space, including human exploration, but but to my mind as a taxpayer and also, you know, in terms of our agenda of commercialising, um, it, it's got to have benefits back here and back here on Earth. And, you know, one of the things I would say about space as a long-time um, space professional, I guess, is that... Uh, space services really do underpin many of our um, important aspects of life here on Earth, be it from weather, um, communications, or from uh, position, navigation, and timing. Often we don't understand how these complex systems underpin our way of life on Earth. And so, you know, part of our job is to demonstrate through the, through the project um, how those things uh, can translate back to benefits. And I guess one of your other questions was, you know, how important has the trailblazer been in in getting some of this done? Um, very important. You know, one of the one of the difficulties about space commercialization is is the um, requirement to demonstrate spaceflight heritage. And I use an analogy. You know, if you're doing a self-driving car and you want to get it to TRL eight on Earth, then make it drive around a car park and not knock over anything that looks like a human. Um, if you want to demonstrate TRL for a space piece of hardware. Get it up into space, survive 300 seconds of launch um, at high G and phenomenal vibration, um, put it into a vacuum, survive the radiation, extreme heat and temperature variations, and um, send your data back to Earth. And that is your tick to then sell. It's a high bar, a high barrier to entry. And um, through our program, we are offsetting and defraying some of those costs and then getting those products up into space. Well, and there has been some recent uh, success stories uh, in Australia, which is great to see. Uh, we won't get into the politics in terms of whether space has been sufficiently acknowledged uh, under the, the current gov government and the like. Uh, there's a lot around sort of other funding, but uh, I think one of the things is these kind of highlights, these programs and the specific projects highlight that Australia's capability 
uh, within this domain. Maybe just dive into a little bit more uh, on this one, the ANU and Aspen Medical, but it also involves uh, a couple of other com companies, including Sabre Astronautics and the like. Uh, how does this one come about? Maybe just walk us through how these programs uh, from start to finish sort of to, to walk you through uh, how it actually happens. Yeah, okay. Well, that, that's, a, that's a question I didn't expect in terms of the history, but um, I guess it's a good one. So um, I do know that um, ANU, as the, the lead university for this one, working with um, Aspen Medical um, and also Sabre Astronautics and Liquid Instruments, um, you know, from ANU's perspective, they've got a long history of working in the, um, in the biomedical sector. Um, Aspen is one of Australia's leading companies um, doing biomedical research, and they have um, out puts throughout the world, you know, both in um, Asia, Africa, Indo-Pacific, um, led by uh, an ex-veteran. Um, so good Australian company doing great work. Um, I've spoken to the Aspen uh, team and, and briefed them as well. And, you know, they have this vision of uh, using space as a uh, as an analogue to demonstrate how telehealth and other things might, might transpire. So again, how do we bring this back to Earth? Space is a challenging environment. Um, that's one aspect. Um, we did introduce um, the consortium to Sabre Astronautics, which is another Australian company um, that has been around uh, for some years developing things such as the Re uh, Responsive Space Operations Centre, which was built in Adelaide um, to help conduct space operations. And um, they really brought um, access to the uh, International Space Station and to microgravity experimentation, plus ground stations to download the data. Um, and Liquid Instruments, another great Australian company that is uh, exporting well, um, and they are building you know, things like edge computers, um, sort of doing a lot of processing out at the forefront of where the technology is. Um, there's no no further place than space, uh, and putting those um, th th that equipment up up onto the ISS to download the data, compile it, package it, and then stream it back down to Earth. Um, I guess that builds the the consortium. And um, you know, all all partners have different um, focus areas, but really the the power is in seeing how the consortium's coming together and you know working to deliver some of this. Maybe a bit more explanation on what the actual project is: the AI to monitor health. So this is remote remote workers, but specifically this one uh, to monitor health for astronauts. Um, yeah, well, look, uh, the the key partner here is Aspen Medical. I've mentioned, and I really applaud them for making the leap into the demanding environment of space. And you know, they're going to showcase how space technology can help us here on Earth. Um, they bring significant experience in health response from around the globe. Um, what the project will entail is uh, the development of micro wearables. So they'll be strapped to astronauts to monitor parameters, you know, the health parameters, um, and you know, many and numerous. Um, but ANU is also developing a, a digital analog to the human. So down to the organ level, so digital twinning is what we call it typically yeah. in the uh, aerospace industry. But for a human, this will be very interesting. So putting a human in, in microgravity, um, taking off those measurements and recording them, and then applying them to the virtual model and, and refining that virtual model so that when you do want to... Um, make uh, assessments about what might be happening to a long duration mission, maybe an astronaut on its way to uh, Mars, um, you can start making those assessments on Earth before you start to, you know, provide advice, etc. So fascinating experiments. And also it'll involve um, something which will be we call, typically call a vomit comet, um, putting putting our patients in a um, in a, uh, a flight aircraft which will conduct parabolic flights which will give the sense of uh, low gravity, microgravity, and taking those measurements as well to help build the model. So very interesting, lots of different technology coming here and all backed by, you know, Liquid Instruments as equipment to, to pull that data off and Bluetooth it through to a, an interface down to earth. Wonderful. We actually heard of the digital twinning uh, at our, an event with ANU last uh, August, uh, the uh, Space, Space Medicine for Earthlings event. So That's it's great it. to know that that program is now finding life. And interesting also with Aspen Medical, uh, I've been seeing them sort of pop up at events uh, as well. And I knew that they're in the biotech, but uh, also they've obviously seen an opportunity there uh, with ANU to, to come together. So it, it is actually a advanced uh, Australian tech and research uh, coming together. It's wonderful to see. Is that well, is that part of the role that you have? Is you bring them together? Do you think they would have found each other uh, otherwise? In fact, Liquid Instruments. I just met them sort of last week at an event in uh, in Sydney, 
and I hadn't really heard of them before. But then when I was looking at the tech, it was like, wow, that's a you know amazing uh, sort of on the rack uh, type of equipment. Um, but yeah, is that is that the the skill that you're providing in terms of that consortium, and, and you can bring these these partners together? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, all of the our three partner universities, you know, they have their own contacts. I mean, it is a small ecosystem, but uh, yeah. but as you said, like you know, Liquid may not have been seen as a oh, that's a that's a company we need to focus on for space. Um, so I do I do see our role as the I launch executive as um, somewhat of a, a matchmaker. Um, we're here to make sure that the program is delivered successfully um, for both the Department of Education, who is the primary funder, and the Commonwealth of Australia. Um, but also the the lead university, University of Southern Queensland, and you know we're we're there to 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 manage the program, but we spent a lot of time last year matchmaking, um, you know, finding out interesting pockets of research. I do know with one of our experiments, uh, we had a a company in um, Adelaide producing radioisotope heating units. They're already already doing some research, and literally by walking through a lab in University of Southern Queensland, finding a researcher who's also working on thermoelectrics, converting heat into power. Um, and now we've brought them together with University of Ad South Australia, and we've got a, a consortium there. So some of it's happenstance. We'd prefer it a lot a lot of it to be more measured. Um, but there are some real gems out there. And I guess it goes to the heart of what the Department of Education is trying to do, which is you know, show that these relationships can be um, developed. And then the payoff to me will be in three to five years if if company X calls up University Y and says, hey, remember that that work we did a year ago? Let's let's keep doing that. That's the power of this program, I think. And I think you're absolutely right in terms of the, these are such unique, you call them gems. I think that's a, a, quite a good term, but they're such unique projects and unique uh, uh, parts of research. It's hard for them to sort of then scope out and go, okay, who else can we be working with uh, within that? It, there's a really divide there, uh, which is very, very important. Um, I suppose what's a call to action? What would you uh, have the audience sort of uh, be alive to uh, that's coming up? You mentioned a cohort uh, coming up mm -hmm. soon. Um, yeah, so, um, you know, going back to my point about, you know, I think, you know, these space derived services are critically important to our way of life on Earth. And, and you highlighted maybe the, the political, um, uh, you know, consternations that many in the space industry have. Um, it, this complex network and, and service provision is not really well understood. So I would ask, you know, your viewers and, and, and stakeholders, um, they're already learning about this criticality, they already know about it, but, you know, they can support uh, our mission further. Um, one, I'd say follow us on social media. We've got some great projects. And, and like you said, you can learn about some of the great companies coming out. Um, advocacy, be an advocate, you know, especially with government. Government is still hungry to learn about what space is doing for terrestrial operations, but quite often doesn't understand or, or doesn't get the brief. Um, and then finally, yeah, we we are going to unveil at the uh, 24th of July Space Forum in Adelaide, um, our new program. So we are going to put some uh, one one million dollars initially up for grabs, uh, which will be there to solve wicked problems at the low TRL level. So you know, it's TRL three to four. If a company has a problem that you know they've been trying to get something off the off the prototype or off the bench, but they just can't get funding or they need university support, what we're going to do is we'll, we'll fund that activity. Um, we're looking at you know between twenty to one hundred k um, proposals. Which will help solve that wicked problem with a university partner. You know, maybe it's you know some radiation testing or some prototype work, um, and we will. You know, I'll ask for anyone out there in the industry who has these wicked problems, if they can start thinking about them and come see us, um, or or email us at ilaunch at ilaunch .space. Beautiful. Well, look, I'm glad you've uh, given uh, the Australian Space Forum a plug there in Adelaide in July. Uh, we'll also have uh, Dr. Joni Sitzma uh, in Brisbane on the 4th of July uh, as well at a space launch event with Griffith University. So uh, great to have those events plugged. Uh, we'll have the links in the show notes. But Darren Lovett, the Executive Director with iLaunch Trailblazer, thank you so much for that, what I would call a deep dive, but also uh, a call to action as well for some of these uh, opportunities coming up. Thank you very much for joining us on Australian Space TV. Yeah, great. Thank you, Chris.